All right, uh, with that said now, the sixth antithesis in a sense flows right out of the fifth and it proves that point when Jesus calls on his disciples to love their enemies. So he begins this one by saying, you've heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Well, what's he talking about? He's alluding there to, again, the law of Moses. In the book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 18, Moses is very explicit. He says, you shall love your neighbor, right? Sometimes people think Jesus came up with the idea of loving one's neighbor. It's not Jesus. It's the Jewish law of Moses. It's the Pentateuch. It's the Old Testament. So he takes that straight out of the Old Testament. But he also says, you've heard it said that you should hate your enemy. And that's a little more difficult. Uh, because nowhere in the Old Testament is there ever a command to hate one's enemy. It's interesting. In fact, in the book of Exodus chapter 23 and in Proverbs chapter 25, it actually says very clearly that you should do good to your enemy. So like if your enemy's ox falls into a pit or something, you should, you should help it out, right? Um, so the idea of doing good to your enemies is actually an Old Testament teaching as well. So what does Jesus mean when he says you shall, you've heard it said you shall hate your enemy? Uh, we don't know. But most scholars think that Jesus is alluding here to the law of harem warfare, where the Israelites were commanded by Moses to completely wipe out their enemies in the Holy Land, like the Canaanites, the Perizzites, and the Jebusites. This is sometimes called holy war, but that's not actually what it means. Uh, it's harem warfare, a complete destruction of all their enemies. Sometimes people think that that's what Jesus is alluding to when he says, you've heard it was said to hate your enemies. I think that's probably right, but we don't know for sure. In any case, Jesus is going to go and, and, and give a very different law. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. Right? So, again, this is one of those passages people say, how can I possibly love my enemies? Right? I don't feel the slightest affection for this person who stole from me or this person who abused me or even more like uh, someone, this person murdered my, my spouse or my child. I could never love them. Uh, I could never feel any affection for them. Well, it's important to remember that in the Bible, love, although it can be expressed through affection, is not defined as an emotion. It's not defined as a feeling, although we tend to think of love as a feeling. Love, the definition of love in, in the Bible, is to choose the good for another person. It's to will the good for another. So in other words, it's not an emotion. It's an act of the will. It's a choice. And so in this context, what does Jesus mean when he says you'll love your enemies? Well, he tells us. He gives us the definition in the next verse. You shall pray for those who persecute you. Right? That's it right there. No matter what you feel about someone who's hurt you, if you pray for them, if you ask the Lord to bless them, if you ask God to, to bless them and to, to give good things to them, to bring about their repentance, to, to give them life and health, that is an act of love. To pray for someone else is to take your precious time and use it for their benefit and for their good. And that alone is an act of love. So it's very important to understand that you don't have to feel anything toward an enemy to love your enemy. You just have to do good to that enemy, especially uh, by praying for them, by interceding for them, and uh, by offering penance and sacrifice as well for them. And in doing so, Jesus says, you'll be like God. You'll be like the Father in heaven. Why? Well, look at the world. It's full of wicked people. And yet what happens? The sun comes up every day. He makes the sun shine on the good and the just. So if you have any you know, questions, does God love sinners? Well, did the sun come up today? And the answer is yes, right? Uh, he makes his rain fall on the, the just and the unjust. Same thing. Do, uh, does God love the wicked? Does he love the violent? Does he love the sinful? Well, he gave the rain from heaven that gives us water to drink and food to eat. So the answer is, Yes. So what he's calling for in this final passage is for us to love our enemies just like God loves his enemies. And when we do that, we, are, we become children of God. We are, become sons of the Father because we more perfectly image God's love when we love someone who hates us than when we love someone who loves us. And that's what he's going to go on to show there. He says, 
even the pagans or the Gentiles, you know, they love people who love them. Even tax collectors. <laughs> Notice Jesus is like an IRS agent here. It's the worst possible human being you can have is a tax collector. Even the tax collectors, you know, uh, love those who love them. I mean, that's not the bar we're setting here for the new law of love, for the new covenant. We're setting a divine bar here. We're going to love those who hate us. Uh, even the Gentiles, uh, even the pagans, you know, love those who love them. But we have to be perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect. Um, but before I move on, let me just say this one thing. I was recently reading St. Catherine of Siena's Dialogues, and in it she says something very interesting. She says that the reason God created multiple human beings, the reason He gave us neighbors who He knew would harm us and hurt us, insult us, and sin against us, was because He wanted us to love the most perfect kind of love, which is to love like He loves. Um, see, if all we had, if He had just created one human being, that human being could love God, but God is perfect. He deserves our love. He's, 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 he is not our enemy. He is our Creator, and He's worthy of all of our love. But see, God doesn't just love those who are good. God loves those who are evil, and he loves his enemies. So in order to perfect our love, St. Catherine says, God made our neighbor so that we could love those who don't love us, so we could love those who hate us. And in that way, our love would be more God-like, because God loves not just the just, he loves the unjust as well. So this is why the saints have always said, love of neighbor is in certain sense the highest form of love, because, um, it's, and it's certainly necessary for salvation, because it is God-like to love those who don't love us. Whereas when we love God, we love someone who does love us.